So how did disco influence disco rap in, in, in this case? You know, as I said, disco had a, a more indirect influence um, in terms of some of the DJ technique that hip hop DJs borrowed, like slip cueing and backspinning, um, stuff like that. An emphasis on the break and mixing was also like a major part of, of disco. Um, and appropriating and doing remixes and stuff and stuff like that. So there were some some influences, um, but you know, largely hip hop culture was anti-disco in the sense of these were kids who couldn't get into the discotheques, you know, at the time, um, and they thought disco music was too. It was too mainstream, you know. They were like I said, like Herc was always looking for like more underground raw vibes, you know. So some of the disco's influence on the disco rap music, though, was, you know, there was an emphasis on a, ryth a, 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 a really, like, you know, up-tempo rhythm and a nice bass line, okay, which is, you know, hip-hop is drum and bass, you know, so much. Um, as I said, the DJ techniques, um, you know, disco records and disco rap records were about parties. You know, they were ha having a good time. Uh, so a lot of the same message and theme. The structure of, of the songs were quite, you know, tended to be quite similar. You know, 8 or 16 bar, you know, intro, uh, core, uh, you know, maybe a chorus, but not so much in disco rap. It was literally like, you know, verse, I don't know, fucking 48 bar verse, you know, um, so a little bit different in that sense, but it was just meant to just keep going on and on and on and on and on. Um, the importance of 12 inch vinyl, listen, um, putting one song onto a 12 inch disc was an innovation by disco DJs. The music industry jumped on and appropriated that. Up until the mid 70s, all singles came on 40 45 on 7 inch 45 disc um, and uh, by accident disco DJs invented putting it onto a 12 inch which made it sound better made the groove sticker so things were louder and bassier and thumping and bumping her okay um, and so all early uh, rap disco rap records were t were released on 12 inch single I mean you can get them on 45 but those were intended for ju jukeboxes um, and so the 12 inch was straight up for, um, you know, DJ's club, home consumption, etc. Um, yeah, how the songs were made. I mean, you know, these songs were not made with digital sampling. Um, they were not made with DJs. So with hip hop culture, music was, you know, the musical backing was a DJ cutting up breaks. What disco tried to do and disc you know disco well disco rap tried to do was try to emulate with a session band you know a dj cutting up breaks for 14 minutes you know and these motherfuckers these session musicians would have to play on beat you know fucking 16 minute back backing track you know um but yeah, they would interpolate popular disco rhythms. So disco songs were obviously made with, um, with a live band. Uh, maybe in the studio they'd add, um, you know, a drum machine, you know, kick or snare, um, you know, to layer the drums or whatever. But that was pretty rare. So again, you know, nothing was made with sampling, but it had, you know, it was trying to recreate what DJs were doing, which was analog sampling, creating a loop, essentially. Um, the costuming and choreography, obviously, bit from disco, um, you know, the style and all and all that. Um, and you know, the thing is, is you know, was hip hop anti disco? You know, maybe the culture was, you know, at least at first. But with disco rap, it became, you know, about disco. It became about the green and the white, meaning money and and coke. You know, um, there's no coincidence. You know, people had names like Coke La Rock, et cetera, right? Like that, you know, we'll watch a film about, um, you know, Coke and uh, uh, policing and, um, you know, drug laws and hip hop uh, in this term. Okay, as we know, you know, studio musicians um, try to recreate DJ looping breaks, a process called interpolating um, in the sense of they would replay 
just a part from a popular uh, disco song. Um, and that's really important. So they would interpolate these melodies and loop them. Um, sometimes they made original uh, cuts or songs to sound like break beats. So they would, they would come up with them. If you've ever heard of the movie Wild Style, it's a classic 19, it's the only real hip hop movie came out in 1982. It stars all of like these OG graffiti writers, MCs, B-boys, B-girls, um, etc. The whole soundtrack was actually a bunch of groups, a bunch of um, musicians from the group Blondie. And what they did is they tried to play like original songs, but that sounded like break beats, you know, so that's a lot what was going on. Um, you know, disco rap tried to take something that was raw, edgy, youth, subcultural, you know, something made for, you know, really just straight up made for young black kids um, in the hood. And you know, disco rap tried to make it adult, make it for the masses, uh, make it something that you could sell to, to white people, etc. I just want to um, make it clear that no sampling was done in 1979 or much of like the early, early 80s. It's not until the mid 80s that we actually have people sampling. Uh, drum machines come first, but sampling technology at this time, um, the CMI was like 50, 60 grand. You know, no one was sampling nothing. Um, and yeah, and these early disco rap records were, were often produced by, and these artists were exploited by, um, you know, independent black-owned uh, record labels at first, before the, the, the mainstream record labels kind of caught wind and were like, whoa, we can make some, we can make some money off of this shit. Um, but specifically Enjoy Records um, and Sugar Hill uh, Records, okay? So, ba I mean, you know, you got to understand these, these kids, you know, a lot of them coming from, you know, the South Bronx, n not with much, you know. Um, they get shown a record deal where they're, here's the $1,000, you know, uh, that's a... F friggin' shit ton of money, you know, and you take that. You have no business lawyer, you have no business sense. You you don't know the business and you have these people who've been in the business for 30, 40 years who know know how contracts and copyright and licensing work. And they make hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars off of off of your work just because you don't know. And that became a major antagonism uh, in the early rap scene um, was that. So the first song uh, to actually have rapping in it was a song called uh, Kim T King Tim the Third Personality Jock by Fatback Band. Fatback Band was like a funk, a funk group, I believe, from Brooklyn. Um, you know, soul funk group, and you know, obviously, every funk group by the late '70s was making disco music. Just look at Cool and the Gang, who was a real ill funk and soul group that you know made bubblegum disco music, um, you know, eventually. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, King Tim the Third, Personality Jock, came out in summer of 1979, and it, it, you know, it's notable only because it was the first record with rapping on it. That's it. It wasn't a hit. It wasn't a big deal. It didn't really have any weight or importance to it except, except for that, um, you know. Uh, but it's important, you know, because King Tim the Third, um, you know, he's trying to imitate, you know, MCs and radio DJs, um, you know, on, on this record, you know, uh, and there was radio DJs like Love Budge, Love Bug Starsky, and DJ Hollywood and stuff, who would, you know, do little rhymes and and stuff like that, um, you know, on the radio. And so this is kind of what was was going on um, with this. Bill Curtis, uh, who was at Spring Records, saw DJ Hollywood who would, who would play records and rhyme and stuff, and he wanted to cut something like this, so did that with uh, the fat back. We're strong as an ox and tall as a tree. We can rock it so viciously. If you throw the highs and your eyes are bathed in your face, we're the funk machines that rock the human race. Skate down, boogie shot. Come on, girl, let's do the rock. Slam, dunk, do the jerk. Let me see your body work. 